G'day, we've got a really quick video today. This one is just detailing a must have, in my opinion. If you have a third gen RAM 2500, 3500 with the 59 common rail turbo diesel, if you've got one of these, this is something that in my opinion, you probably want to have in your glove compartment, in your glove box, just in case, you know, something goes wrong. Uh, my personal opinion only, do things that you think are best um, and at your own risk. But in any event, a common fault on these trucks is the pressure relief valve. So the pressure relief valve sits just in here on the engine, that's it there, that's a new one. Uh, mine's just gone. So what you'll see um, with the pressure relief valve that's on the way out is the car will get, you know, probably get hard to start and then just won't start. It'll just crank and crank and crank and crank and crank, won't start. And if you have a look online as to how to diagnose that problem, they'll give you a few things. You obviously check the easy stuff, make sure your fuel filter's not clogged. Um, check the easy stuff first, check that your, uh, your fuel pump's working, it's getting correct pressure up to your rail, do all of that. Uh, but one of the things they tell you to do to diagnose a pressure relief valve is you take your banjo fitting, which is just in here, um, follow the line from your pressure relief valve, it sits on the common rail on the left hand side of the vehicle, I had to think about that, it sits on the left hand side of the vehicle and runs down uh, to your uh, to your fuel filter and then continues on to the uh, to the fuel pump and it says you know crack the line at your follow the banjo fitting down and then crack it and if there's diesel in the line you've probably got a pressure relief valve that's stuck open problem with that is that the line is two-way it goes from the pressure relief valve to the fuel filter and it goes from the fuel pump to the fuel filter now if, you're, if you find diesel in the line, that's probably business as usual because it's just overflow from potentially your fuel rail or from uh, your fuel pump. So that won't diagnose it. But what will diagnose it is if you take out the banjo bolt, which is that one, just goes on the top of your pressure relief valve. Uh, you've got your banjo fitting in between there and that's your bolt on top. You take that out. And what you want to do, and this is my handy tip to keep with you, is go and get a bolt, same thread as your banjo bolt, same length. Now this is a high tensile bolt, bought it for, I think it was like $2, a dollar sixty-five or something. Anyway, it was too long, so I've cut it down uh, to match the, the length of the bolt of the banjo bolt that came out of it. So I've cut this one down, same thread though. Take your banjo bolt out, Put your solid bolt in, tighten it up, take your, use a copper washer, or if you haven't got a copper washer, if you're stuck on the side of the road or something, um, you could take the, just to get your, you know, just to diagnose it, you take your little washer off the banjo bolt, transfer that onto your solid bolt, screw that in, that's a pressure relief valve, just screw that in to the down on the banjo bolt, tighten it up, make sure it's tight, now make sure that's no longer than that, tighten it up, then go start the car. Now if that starts the car after you, know, you just crank and crank and crank and crank and crank, wouldn't go, you put that in a solid bolt, crank it, it starts, there's your problem. Your pressure relief valve is stuck open and, you, and your uh, common rail can't build pressure. So uh, there's plenty of online forums, there's plenty of online conversations uh, in fact, there's retailers that will sell you a solid block of machined steel instead of a pressure relief valve uh, just to put in there and block it off. You could equally do that with this bolt, uh, would do the same thing. And there's a few people that will say that they've, they've done it, pressure relief valve's known to fail, just block it off, you never have a problem. To me, you know, you, know, you deal with it how you wish to. For me, pressure relief valve bears for a reason. I'm gonna just keep it as it is. And uh, look, it's not a cheap part. If you buy a genuine pressure relief valve there in, in Australian dollars, about $500. This is a um, Bosch uh, unit. It was 200, so it's not really cheap either. And then you can buy no-name ones for $40. And the reviews I've read of the no-name brands don't look exceptionally good. So I thought I'll stay away from that. People saying that after a month they blew, after six months they blew, after three months they blew. So I didn't wanna do that. 
So I've gone with Bosch, it's a reputable name, it was cheaper than Genuine, so I'm gonna put that on today. Uh, but unless you wanna carry one of these as a spare, uh, probably a cheaper option is to just carry a bolt and then that will diagnose it for you. Now, as for, it, it would possibly get you home. In fact, it, I, I would suggest that it would get you home if you broke down, but do that at your own risk. Uh, you have to make a determination for yourself as to whether you're willing to just block the pressure relief valve off and drive it home. Plenty of commentators say it's fine, but make up your own mind. So there's a little tip for you. Get one of these, keep it in your glove compartment. That will allow you to diagnose a pressure relief valve. And if you want to take the step, if you do get stuck, um, you can use that to get you home. Thanks for watching.